the following special presentation is being brought to you by the Bell System. We hope you will enjoy this rare event. Horowitz Live, an extraordinary concert by the legendary Vladimir Horowitz with the New York Philharmonic, conducted by Zubin Mehta in a performance of the Rachmaninoff Piano Concerto No. 3. Coming to you live from the stage of Avery Fisher Hall at Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts in New York City. We will return with Vladimir Horowitz following this announcement from the Bell System. My name is Edward Villella. Perhaps you know me as a dancer with the New York City Ballet. Today I'm playing a different kind of role. I'm pleased to welcome you and to speak to you for the performing arts. The arts. Sounds rather forbidding, doesn't it? Yet, in the past 10 years, opera, ballet, symphony concerts, and museum going have become increasingly popular. So popular, in fact, that in many places, the attendance at these cultural activities is comparable to major sports events. As participation in cultural activities grows, so much the support we extend to those activities. Happily, that is happening. Government and business, as well as thousands of public-spirited citizens, are contributing to that support. Thank you, Eddie. This concert is a very special occasion for all of us. We are delighted to welcome Mr. Horowitz to Avery Fisher Hall at Lincoln Center, and also to congratulate him on this, the 50th anniversary year of his American debut with the New York Philharmonic. And while we are observing anniversaries, this program carries on the Bell Systems tradition of sponsoring fine music programming that began 38 years ago with the memorable Bell Telephone Hour. It's estimated that today's concert with Vladimir Horowitz and the New York Philharmonic will be seen by millions of Americans, many of whom have never attended a live performance by a major symphony orchestra in their own hometown. Starting next year and continuing for four years, the Bell System will help sponsor the tours of seven of America's great symphony orchestras. The Boston Symphony, the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, the Cleveland Orchestra, the Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestra, the New York Philharmonic, the Philadelphia Orchestra, and the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra. In 1979, the tours of four of these orchestras will crisscross America, taking them to nearly 50 towns, cities, and university campuses all over the land. They'll be performing in places as diverse as Washington, D.C. and Seattle, Washington, college towns like Storrs, Connecticut, and cities as far apart as San Francisco and Boston. And that's only the beginning because these concerts in 1979 are only the first of a four-year touring program that the Bell System will help sponsor. In all, about 100 cities will be reached. Do you know what that means? That many, many Americans will continue to have the opportunity to discover the very special magic of concert going. At the New York Philharmonic, we are proud to be part of the Bell System's plan for symphony orchestra tours and proud to be part of this afternoon's wonderful program. And now, for a moment, Vladimir Horowitz speaks of his life and music. I improvise each time I'm on the stage. I improvise. I never play twice the same. The conductors are always very much afraid because they say that you rehearse one way, you play in concert another way. I cannot do it other way. Because everything what you do in life especially in art, should be spontaneous. That's very important. Vladimir Horowitz belongs to a tradition that goes back to Franz Liszt. He is a 19th century romantic, perhaps the last. Born in Kiev, Russia in 1904, his first public appearances brought him standing ovations, capacity audiences, and rave notices which have followed him ever since. By the time he was 24, he had created a sensation all over Europe, performing with the great conductors of that time, including Karl Muck, Wilhelm Furtwängler, and Wilhelm Mengelberg, and giving command performances to the crowned heads of state. In 1928, he and Thomas Beecham made their joint American debut with the New York Philharmonic. Critics called him the Thunderer and the fire-eating virtuoso. In 1933, he played his first performance with Arturo Toscanini, who later became his father-in-law. Passionate and elusive, 
Several times in his career, he has withdrawn into mysterious seclusion, only to re-emerge a deeper, even more exciting artist. Critics have said, there is a kind of inner tension and electricity in the man that's scary. His is the last great demonic piano career. The last musician whose success his colleagues consider supernatural. I have tremendous amount of integrity. And I criticize myself much more than anybody else criticize me. In the newspaper, a magazine, and everything. I'm the greatest, greatest critic of myself. And so that means I will never be happy if I don't give everything I have. So, you know, a human being is not a machine. Someday he is better, someday he is not. Everybody, every one of us. And I hope the 24th of September, at from 5 to 6, I will feel well. Everything will be balanced. And all my emotion, all my spirit, spiritual control will be there in the place. And I will give a good performance and then I will satisfy the people. That's all. <laughs> Now, pianist Vladimir Horovitz and conductor Zubin Mehta come on stage at Avery Fisher Hall to join the New York Philharmonic. As always, when Horovitz appears, tremendous audience enthusiasm. Taking hands with concertmaster Rodney Fred. Live from Avery Fisher Hall, Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts in New York, we're going to have the Rachmaninoff Third Piano Concerto. Horovitz, Mehta, the New York Philharmonic. Philharmonic Zubin Mehta conducting live from Avery Fisher Hall in New York, the Rachmaninoff Piano Concerto No. 3. And not at all surprisingly, an instant standing ovation. Again, Mr. Horowitz returning with Mr. Mehta. And Mr. Horowitz saluting the artist for this performance of the Rachmaninoff Piano. This year, Vladimir Horowitz celebrating the 50th anniversary of his American debut. In just a few days, October 1st, he'll be celebrating his 74th birthday. Mr. Horvitz, not only a respected and admired, but a greatly loved artist. As we said, instant standing ovation here at Avery Fisher Hall. Horowitz has lived with his concerto for many years. He discovered it when he was 15 years old. That was about 10 years after the concerto was written. 
He met Rachmaninoff in 1928 here in New York, just before his great American debut. He and Rachmaninoff went to the basement at Steinway, where Mr. Horowitz played the Rachmaninoff third concerto for the composer. Rachmaninoff himself played the accompaniment of the second piano. They were friends instantaneously. Here again, Vladimir Horowitz, center stage, Avery Fisher Hall, Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts in New York. A word about the first movement cadenza of this concerto, that extended section in which the piano plays unaccompanied, but building on music from earlier themes of the movement. Mr. Horowitz uh, plays the first of the two cadenzas Rachmaninoff composed for this concerto. This is the better known, as a matter of fact, of those two cadenzas, and Mr. Horowitz says this one builds to the end of the concerto, where he feels the alternate one is like an ending in itself. He says the concerto doesn't end there, so let us play the first cadenza. Zubin Mehta is in his first few weeks as the new music director of the New York Philharmonic Orchestra. He's been a well-known figure on the international music scene for a number of years through his concert and opera conducting and through his many recordings. He relinquished the post of music director of the Los Angeles Philharmonic, a post he held for 16 years to come to the New York Philharmonic. This is not the first time Mr. Horowitz and Mr. Mehta have performed this concerto together. Earlier this year, they played it when Mr. Mehta was music director of the Los Angeles Philharmonic. And now they have played it at Avery Fisher Hall with Mr. Mehta, the new music director of the New York Philharmonic. Mr. Horowitz said it was one of the supreme influences on his life to meet Rachmaninoff and play the third concerto for him, the composer himself at the accompanying piano. He said that was some 50 years ago. And now, a word from John D. DeButz, chairman of the board of American Telephone and Telegraph Company. Good afternoon. The men and women of the Bell Telephone System are very proud to have brought you this afternoon's concert. And I am honored to be able to speak to you on their behalf. Today's concert continues a long tradition. Our original Bell Telephone Hour began in 1940 on radio and continued over the years on television. Today, as you have heard, we have announced a new commitment, a further extension of our tradition of bringing you outstanding performances of fine music. Beginning next spring, we will help sponsor the concert tours of some of America's greatest symphony orchestras. We are doing so because we continue to believe that merely doing our best to furnish you good communication services is not the limit of our obligation to the communities we serve. We believe we are obliged also to be good citizens of those communities. As a consequence of this obligation, the Bell System companies were among the very first businesses in America to acknowledge in a variety of ways a broadened view of what has come to be called the social responsibility of business. As we approach the decade of the 1980s, I can think of no dimension of that responsibility that is more valid or more deserving than helping to extend the joy of the arts to greater numbers of people all across America. As our business has grown with America, so too have our responsibilities. Those responsibilities we have now put into words, first in our annual report to shareholders, and now in this booklet. I would like to send you a copy. We very much want you to know what we are trying to accomplish and why. We want you to hold us accountable. It is easy enough for me to declare that it is the intention of the Bell System to strive for constant improvement of the quality of our service and constant improvement of its usefulness. But whether or not we in fact achieve these goals is determined by the degree to which Bell System people strive for them in the performance of their jobs. These policies then are a guide to conduct. Here you will find the policies which dictate the development of our technology and the shape and scale of our organization. The policies which establish a basis for our human relationships with customers, with employees, with share owners. And finally, 
This statement recognizes that what makes our responsibility unique is that of the hundreds of millions of messages we handle every day, each one, to someone, is more important than all the others. The whole range of our policies is here. Our goals, our ideals are here. Sometimes we may fall short of them. Everlastingly, however, we try. We call the booklet Words We Live By, and you may obtain a copy of Words We Live By if you will write to me in care of the address you see on the screen. Thank you, and good afternoon. For your copy, write John D. DeButts, Post Office Box 1992, General Post Office, New York, New York, 10001. There was only one way to end this concert, and Vladimir Horowitz took that action. He led concertmaster Rodney Friend off the stage by the hand. The orchestra left. The audience wanted more and wanted to continue applauding and bravoing Vladimir Horowitz, whom we've heard with the New York Philharmonic and Zubin Mehta live in the Rachmaninoff Third Piano Concerto. We hope you've enjoyed this telecast. We thank you for being with us. This afternoon's special presentation of Horowitz Live was brought to you by the Bell System.